in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to you as we come together for our Mass today. It's the 3rd of September. We're just getting into spring to a degree. And still in the middle here in Melbourne, in Victoria, of stage four. And hopefully we've got beyond the middle, getting towards the end, we pray, of the very intensive stage four lockdown. But all of us around Victoria, around Australia, struggling with the many elements of the COVID-19 crisis and, of course, so many people throughout the rest of the world who are still contending with it on any number of different levels. And our prayers and support go with them. So thank you for joining us for our Mass today, and we'll just begin asking God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Today is the feast of St. Gregory the Great, one of the great leaders of the Church around the 6th century, I think the latter part of the 6th century, and a great teacher and reformer of the Church. O God, you care for your people with gentleness. You rule them in love. Through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, grant the spirit of wisdom to those you have given authority to govern. May the flourishing of a holy flock become the eternal joy of the shepherds. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Since we have, by an act of mercy, been entrusted with this work of administration, there is no weakening on our part. On the contrary, we will have none of the reticence of those who are ashamed, no deceitfulness or watering down the word of God. But the way we commend ourselves to every human being with a conscience is by stating the truth openly in the sight of God. For it is not ourselves that we are preaching, but Christ Jesus as the Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. It is the same God that said, let there be light shining out of darkness, who has shone in our minds to radiate the light of the knowledge of God's glory, the glory on the face of Christ. We are only the earthenware jars that hold this treasure to make it clear that such an overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. O sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim to the nations God is king. The world he made firm in its place. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Proclaim his marvellous deeds to all the nations. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I call you my friends, says the Lord. 
for I have made known to you all that the Father has told me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. A dispute arose between the apostles about which should be reckoned the greatest. But Jesus said to them, Among the pagans it is the kings who lord it over them, and those who have authority over them are given the title benefactor. This must not happen with you. No, the greatest among you must behave as if he were the youngest, the leader as if he were the one who serves. For who is the greater, the one at table or the one who serves? The one at table, surely, yet here am I among you as one who serves. You are the men who have stood by me faithfully in my trials, and now I confer a kingdom on you just as my father conferred one on me. You will eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones to judge the twelve tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you in our St. Simon's virtual congregation and parish, if you part of that, as you probably are on the weekend, you will notice that I always make mention of the people who are not watching, but who are listening, well, hopefully those who are watching are listening too, but on Light FM, or the Light as the station is now called, it's a wonderful Christian radio station which commenced about... Ooh, about 13, 14 years ago. And it's been broadcasting Mass on Sunday mornings pretty well since inception. And I've been part of that myself. And it's been a great privilege to be able to do that. And in the last three years, it's been broadcast from St. Simon's. One of the, the sort of tricks I've had to do is to try and remember. Now, please make sure you don't tell anyone this because they're not supposed to know. But... It's recorded so on Saturday night and goes to air on Sunday morning. So I do my darndest most of the time to not say tonight, because knowing that people are going to be listening to it at 7 o'clock in the morning. But on another level, of course, and again, please don't tell anyone, but this mess is recorded too. <laughs> it's the only way we can do it, but it works pretty well. I'm conscious of... At this Mass today, September the 3rd, that when you're watching it, morning, noon or evening, it will be the day in which I officiate at another Mass, which will be the funeral Mass for my sister Geraldine, who died last week. And that's not going to be an easy task, but it's not easy for any of us who go down the path of loss and bereavement. And I just felt it's not a matter of... <laughs> of bearing my soul or whatever, but there's a very important message, lesson, I suppose, in this, in the sense that I can remember when the restrictions first came in about COVID-19 and being particularly aware of the fact when we got the directions of how this would affect the life of the church, that funerals would only have... 20 people, I think it was, to begin with, and then that was even reduced to 10. And having had a lot to do with so many grieving families over the years, I remember feeling particularly, well, connected with them, saying, that would just be so awful to, instead of, it's not just a matter of numbers, it's number of people who want to be part of this, and want to share in this and how do you honour a whole life of it could be you know many many years or a life that's been taken tragically in a road accident of a younger person or any number of different circumstances by which we are called to God how do you do that the human spirit demands that we come together and honour the person 
often think of what happens in the Western movies, you know, where they all gather around and somebody's died and they all take their hats off and somebody should say something and so on. And it's something which we demand as human beings. But I can remember when that first happened, that funerals would be reduced to 10 or 20 mourners, thinking just how bad that would be. But the point is, I suppose this is the point I'm trying to make. It didn't cross my mind that a few months later I would be one of those people and the rest of my family would be in that circumstance as well, of having to farewell my sister who died at the age of 84, was a very extremely devout person, much more devout than her three brothers, two of whom were priests, but she was a very prayerful, wonderful person. And that we could only gather 10 people for her funeral. And I guess the point I'm trying to mention is that so often we can see situations and we might say, there but for the grace of God go I. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Sometimes we do go down that track a little later on. And so the way in which we handle, empathise, support people in those circumstances, the way we build a world of compassion and care and so on, sometimes we give, sometimes we receive. And as Jesus says, the more you measure out, the more you will get back. And it's such an important part of our life not to get ahead of ourselves. Arrogance is a very ugly word, and it's a very ugly characteristic. We can all be arrogant at times ourselves, and we can certainly run into people who go down that track. But I suppose effectively recorded mass notwithstanding on the day that I'm going to do this funeral mass and burial for my own sister, never dreaming that it would be under the circumstances that it is. There are a lot of things in life that we never dream of, but they come nonetheless. What we ask when we come together in prayer is the grace of God to adapt and manage the circumstances, but in particular, yeah, not to get ahead of ourselves and to recognise that the things that happen to others may be circumstances similar to a path down which we might be called ourselves. And to ask the Lord to give us the help that we need, but also to be able to reach out to those who are in unfortunate circumstances. I wonder how many people that we know, for example, who might have been riding quite high and quite secure in their employment and they bought a car or they bought a house and whatever because they got a good job and that's going to, and they're all set for the rest of their life almost. Then all of a sudden, the bottom falls out of it without notice. I remember seeing a story about two people who were both husband and wife, were both Virgin Airlines pilots, and within a few weeks, they were stocking supermarket shelves. Let's face it, if you've got a license to fly a jet airliner, fly people across the world, you would think you'd be pretty secure because, well, people are always going to travel, aren't they? Well, it ain't necessarily so. So within all of that, I suppose it's a bit <laughs> rambling or what I'm saying at the moment, but I think hopefully there is a bit of a message for us to, when we see circumstances of others to say, well, I could be called to go down that path. When we think that we're riding well, well, maybe there's a few speed humps, maybe a very big speed hump coming our way and not to get ahead of ourselves. Pride comes before a fall, but it's not a matter of just pride and falling. It's a matter of just there are circumstances in life that we can never envisage. We need to be able to support each other, knowing that when we are there for others, others will be there for us. And this is the way in which the grace of God works within us. So, yep, it's going to be, has been, depending on when you're watching this, 
a difficult day for me personally, but you've gone down that track too. And it's not about me. It's about how many thousands of families across our nation have been down this path in the past six months and will have to go down a similar path into the future. It's been an awful journey for people with loved ones in hospitals, nursing homes that they couldn't watch over and so on. And then comes the funeral and they are unable to grieve as they would wish. Let's be aware of all of those people and take them in our hearts and ask that the Lord will help us in some way or other to strengthen them. Maybe it might be that we send a text or make a phone call to someone who's been in that situation. They may not have been all that close to us, but we recognise the fact that they've been down a hard path. So let's do that as best we can and not get ahead of ourselves, never knowing what might be asked of us from one day to the next, but asking that the Lord's presence will always be there for us. Our prayers of intercession. Christ greeted us with good news. May the world hear it through us and find hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We praise and thank you, Lord of heaven and earth. You are the hope and joy of people in every age. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. May the coming of Christ transform the church and renew its youth and vigour in the service of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, grant us a true knowledge of salvation, so that freed from fear and from the power of our foes, we may serve you faithfully all the days of our life. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before we move on with the Mass, I might make mention that on our website, which you have accessed in order to get this Mass, there will be the masses, a vigil mass and the funeral mass for my sister. And just, that she was a reasonably well-known person in her own right, but if to know that they are there and can be accessed at some stage into the future, should you wish to do so. And our whole family would be appreciate whatever prayer of support you can offer. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <laughs> the mystery of this wine. And water. And we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in their humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us, who please, and the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity in cleanse of my sin. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, grant that this sacrifice which we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good. Through its offering, you have loosened the bonds of the offences of all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, 
but help us towards our salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with all the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. I suppose especially in this Mass I remember my own sister Geraldine on the day what will be, as you see this, the day of her funeral and burial and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now, as best we can, wherever we are, we offer each other the sign of peace and friendship in Christ.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith and love and mercy, wait your body and drink your blood, and love in me condemnation, but health in mind and body. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. spiritual communion prayer very much unites us with the mystery of the Eucharist and the presence of Jesus in our lives, particularly in those times which are most demanding and difficult. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, through Christ the Teacher, instruct those you feed with the living bread, and on this feast day of St. Gregory, may we learn your truth and express it in works of charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.